My name is Mathieu Dolanai, and I study the evolution of reptiles and amphibians in the Central Africa. Together with Václav Gvozdík, the leader of our scientific team, we conducted a research of frogs in Cameroon and crocodiles in the Congo. After our return from these expeditions, we have spent a lot of time in the laboratory and we discovered many interesting facts. We decided to present them at the conference in Ghana. The trip to this country will be very interesting for us because many local animals are related to the species we study in the Central Africa. Our first location will be on the coast, and after that we will travel to the north and stop at the border with Burkina Faso. After two weeks of traveling, we will head south of Kumasi, a place of the conference. On the coast of Ghana, we can find the most famous remains of the terrible slave history of Africa. We are arriving to Cape Coast, which is dominated by a big castle standing above the Atlantic Ocean. It was founded in the 17th century by Swedes and later it was taken by the Britons. The European colonists were interested in the tropical wood and gold at the beginning, but later this coast became the biggest centre of slavery in Western Africa. The slaves lived in terrible conditions under the ground, and according to the estimates, several hundred thousands of them died here. We are looking at the busts of the slaves created according to the historical photographs. We can imagine thousands of people sitting here in the dark for months. Many Afro-Americans have their origins right here in the Western Africa. From Cape Coast, we plan to travel to Kakum National Park. We are accompanied by other members of our team, Franciszek and Alexandra. This will be their first experience of the tropical rainforest and herping. Kakum National Park is one of the three places in Africa where it's possible to do the canopy walk. Some places are more than 50 meters high. There are more than 330 meters of pathways and they were built by two Canadian engineers with the help of some people from Ghana. After the walk in the canopy, we plan to set our camp in the forest. We are accompanied by Daniel Konzin, our colleague from Ghana. He studies the dwarf crocodiles of the genus Osteolemus. During the night, we go to the forest and we hope to be lucky to find some. We can't believe it! But soon we find a nest with 11 babies. Máme tady prvního krokodýla. Miminko. Je to Ostelemus. Krásně čerstvě vylíhlý. Našli jsme tady takovou malou školičku. Jste jenom sbírali jak houby. Ano. Já jsem, právě zacílil, já jsem právě zacílil na tyhle oči a už jsem se nedíval kolem. Tak tohoto krokodýla se nám povedlo odchytit pomocí klešti na hady. Takže tato metoda, která se nám nedařila v Kongu, 
se nám teď konečně povedla. Krokodil byl pod vodní hladinou docela hluboko. Tak, tady ho máme trošku větší. A to už je náš, nevím koliká, ty už to nepočítám. We take the young crocodiles to the camp, where we take pictures and videos of them. We measure and weigh them. These small cuties are related to the Congo dwarf crocodile, which we studied in Congo. But the molecular data show that they belong to a new, yet undescribed species. We take all the crocodiles back to the place where we found them. It is very rare to see the nest of dwarf crocodiles. Somewhere around should be the mother of the babies. She stays close to them for several months to protect them. But they can survive on their own right after they hatch. We travel to the north to the drier part of Ghana. We want to visit the Mole National Park, but first we stop at the nearby village called Larabanga. It is famous for its mosque, which is the oldest in Ghana and one of the oldest in Western Africa. It was built in 1421 and it is sometimes called the Mecca of Western Africa. Local people are still using the traditional materials to repair the building, which is the sand and the mud. We enter the Mole National Park just a few kilometers from the mosque. This is one of the last areas in Western Africa where it is possible to see a high concentration of big mammals. The baboons are staying close to the accommodation facilities and they are ready to steal any food from the tourists. There are about 90 species of mammals in mole. For example, warthogs, several species of monkeys or antelopes. Some people even have a glimpse of the leopard. But the main attraction to the park are the elephants. The estimated number of them is more than 800. Moreover, it is possible to track the elephants here, which is a unique experience. It is impossible to compare the emotions during the tracking with those during the classic safari from the car. All people were relocated in the past 
and thanks to that the elephants are safe today. We are aware of the catastrophic state of the populations of big animals in Western Africa, so we leave Mole with a very good feeling. The city of Paga is located on the border with Burkina Faso. It is famous for its sacred crocodiles. Some big reptiles are basking near the lake surrounded by houses. The sound of the chicken should lure the others out of the water. Local people buy chickens for the crocodiles when tourists come, and it is a big attraction for them. These crocodiles are not aggressive, and it is possible to come close to them. The oldest individual is about eighty years old. We learn why are the crocodiles in Paga a sacred. Uh, why well, you all know that the crocodile is the one of the wild animal in the world, but Paga here they are not. The reason is that they saved the life of the founder of this town, who was a hunter. One day he went to the bush to hunt. All his water and food he took along with him got finished. And he was thirsty. There was no way that he could get water to drink. He sat under a tree when he saw one crocodile pass him. He realized that crocodile don't stay anywhere apart from water. So he followed it gradually, gradually to when I enter a hole where there is water. He fed the water and drank and he filled some with containers and he started hunting again. When he finished hunting, coming back home, he met a river. The river was flooded. He couldn't cross it. As he was standing there, he saw the same crocodile trapped across the river. And during the olden days, Hunter do spoke of animals. This man spoke to it and he heard a crocodile tail and the crocodile pulled him across the river. From there, this man swear that if you are a native of his family, you don't have to take a meat of it or kill it. So from there, we also follow that tradition up to now. When they are about to lay their eggs, they come to our houses where we dump the refuse. They dig under of them and lay their eggs or the sides of the river bank. The normal dig there to and lay their eggs. And the normal start to lay their eggs January and their eggs will hatch April. When they, they do come to the houses purposely to search for frogs and toes mm -hmm. and to lay their eggs. And also they see there are fish inside the pond which they, they depend on. We also believe that the total number of people who stay in Paga here represent the total number of crocodiles, meaning each crocodile represents human soul. Take, 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 take. It is necessary to add that people behave to crocodiles in a very African way, and most of the reptiles have damaged eyes from the constant beating with the wooden sticks. Here on the border with Burkina Faso, 
We finish our expedition part of our trip to Ghana. We found some other interesting animals here, such as the African helmeted turtle. And the edible bullfrog. This huge frog survives the long dry season under the ground. We will return to the south to Kumasi City and attend the conference. We really enjoyed wandering in Ghana and we will definitely return in the future.